Yeah, thank you very much. Um, it's a pleasure to talk to you about a new era in farming. I think JB's timeline laid it out really nicely to show that what we generically call information technology and telematics and agronomy are coming together to enable uh, farmers to grow crops in a much more precise and efficient and sustainable way. And uh, I think people have talked a lot about sustainability in agriculture, but we're really now at a point where we have the technology to really address things like water and nutrient management in really new and important ways that will change the face of agriculture positively. Um, one of the questions we were supposed to address was around gaps. And uh, so I think there are three gaps I'd like to mention. One is JB's already touched on, which is the importance of the public data as he defined it and, and the gap that would be created by funding deficiencies. So that's a potential gap that would be really serious if the public databases and our ability to collect and manage and utilize them are not, if that funding's not available, that would create a pretty serious problem. <clears throat> the, the second gap is more, um, uh, a little harder to get your hands on, and it's around the idea that we're in a, some uncharted territory, and uncharted territory by itself is a gap in understanding. You know, um, for example, if the <coughs> landowner and the grower are not the same party, does the lease reflect the ownership of the data? There are lots of things like that when you start collecting a lot of data. So who owns it? Is it the, the renter or the landowner? And in my case, I actually rewrote land leases for my contract farmers that they need to provide me with the yield maps. Because as the owner, um, that affects the value of the land. And so there are a lot of things like that that are going to need to be worked out, and that in itself is a gap, right? We haven't quite charted all of those issues out. Um, our policy is that the data that's generated on the farm by the farmer with equipment they own, lease, or operate is the farmer's data, period, um, and nobody else's. And the farmer can make that data available via contract or handshake agreements or however they want to anybody they choose, but originally it's the farmer's data and our uh, policy on that, which we released uh, via the Climate Corporation, is out there on the web and pretty clear and we've worked with quite a few farm organizations, including the Farm Bureau, on that policy. So if you just Google, Google the Climate Corporation data privacy, you will have it in black and white. The one thing I wanted to say in the middle of the statistical geniuses here is that data, long strings of numbers by itself, is not intrinsically valuable. They're just long strings of numbers. It plugs up your smartphones, your computers, does all kinds of stuff that irritates you. When you get a blue screen, that's because you got too much data. Um, the value of data really emerges from the analysis. And we believe the value chain is something like data acquisition, analytics, followed by insight, followed by advice, followed by a management decision. And nearly all of the value for data is created post-data acquisition in our experience. So let me just move to the, the third gap I wanted to mention, and it's about rural data telemetry. Not to be confused with telematics, which is how we drive machines, but telemetry, which is the transmission of the data to and from the acre or the farm. That is one of the biggest gaps we have. And it's, it's really important because um, if we think we have big data now, it's nothing compared to what we're going to see. Let me just give you a couple of contextual uh, thoughts on that. We think, we map in 10 meter grids. So every 10 meter by 10 meter, that's 33 th feet by 33 feet, that's 1,089 per acre. Um, so that's one way to think about it. And you, you can do the simple math and you get 
a lot of data really fast when you just think in 10 meter grids. But we have the ability, thanks to equipment like JB's company builds, to actually think in terms of hertz. So five hertz, five times a second. At five miles an hour, five or six miles an hour, that you're, you can collect a data point every seven or eight feet, and with section control on those big green machines, you can go down to the row. That's um, depending on the row width. So let me just put it in a, a different context. With section control, you can have a four foot by eight foot grid. You can collect a data point in that. That's a four by eight sheet of plywood. All right, you all know what a four by eight sheet of plywood is. So start doing the divisions of 32 square feet and all of a sudden you have 100,000 of those grids in a normal 80-acre field times however many hundred, you know, a billion acres globally of cropland. Now that's seriously big data, and that's beyond terabytes. So, so the, the reason why this is important is the rural bandwidth is critical. We can collect more information on the machine than we can possibly transmit. And right now, the transmission of data is fragmented. It's fragmented by all of us in the industry. We've developed our own system. Deer has it on their machines. It goes through myjohndeer.com. Their competitors have different systems. Uh, Monsanto, DuPont Pioneer, everybody is developing their own systems. And so the nature of business has fragmented the telemetry of data on the farm. It would be immensely more valuable if there was a universal telemetry system. And that's a rather radical concept that I totally understand has lots of issues around it. But it would be a beautiful thing and create an unbelievable amount of value if every farm, if we had broadband on every acre of cropland in the United States. It would be of tremendous value to the farmers and to the people who wanted to analyze it and turn insights into um, um, advice and decisions that farmers would be more than willing to pay for because they don't have the gigantic computers to, to do all the analytics, but they can generate the data. So that's just a couple of thoughts um, to liven things up a little bit.